fellow disruptors and curious minds what's happening out there welcome to another episode of thinking on paper my name is jeremy gilbertson with me as always is mr mark fielding mark how are you doing today sir i'm doing very well jeremy um how are you doing more importantly I'm well, I'm well, you know, constantly living in a, a, a world of uh, multiple different worlds, tech, creative, lacrosse coach, all the fun stuff, man. It's uh, it's great. Good energy Me today. Too. I'm feeling good. It is good. And talking of energy, just I know we're going to speak about the metaverse and virtual fashion in a minute. Have you been following the, the mem coin frenzy? Because I dipped my toes in it just before we came on here, looking at this mem coin frenzy that seems to be destabilizing ethereum at the moment and it made me think of you because i know we started this podcast to use writing to try to understand web3 and all the concepts that are happening around it and trying to understand our minds as well and by looking into these mem coin frenzy like the pepe coin there's so many things that i don't understand which have come to the floor because of this things about um I was reading about this guy who's currently using like 7% of all the Ethereum gas at the moment. It's coming from this one guy who's using these bots to hijack trades with these mem coins. And it's just mind boggling what's going on. Oh so, my gosh. Uh, well, I, I tell you what, the, the one comment I have on that is, you know, the, there, there's a lot to understand and process with, with everything that's happening in emerging tech and obviously everything that's happening in culture and, Hopefully what we can do at least a little bit with this with this program is is to you know really define and uh, and try and understand that underbelly and that in that intersection uh, in in really interesting ways. So without further ado, Mark, why don't you go ahead and introduce our amazing guest that we have here today that we're very, very excited about? Yes, welcome to uh, Constantino Rosselli. Uh, do I have that pronunciation correct, Constantino? Yeah, that's correct. Um, Constantina is a um, founder of Netizens, which we're going to hear a lot about. Very excited to hear about Netizens. He's on the advisory board for, of the Metaverse Fashion Council. He's a storyteller. He's an author. He's a futurist. He's a keynote speaker. And we're very fortunate to have him here. And I guess the overriding theme of today is going to begin with virtual fashion, met um, wearables in the metaverse. So um, perhaps our first question for you, Constantino, is just tell us a little about yourself, Netizens, and how you view fashion and culture. Um, thank you to invite me. I'm very happy to be here with you guys. Um, just for your question is about, um, about virtual uh, fashion and uh, in the metaverse. Um, which is a, is a concept that is not so um, so new. I mean, we it's developed uh, more than uh, 20 years right now uh, inside of the metaverse that everybody speaks about this more than a year, <laughs> two years, okay? <laughs> so um, I think that uh, people uh, want to make it so popular, but uh, actually it was popular in the games and uh, call it skins and uh, all um, words like uh, Second Life or uh, words like that. And, uh, and, and you know, to design the, uh, the virtual fashion, the virtual uh, garments and the virtual skins is something that is not so uh, young. Uh, I mean, uh, people is doing it uh, at least to, to the gate now. So this is what we're doing on netizens also. We are um, working in, started with digital fashion in, uh, as a process in the design process of, of, uh, of fashion. And then we came out with a much more broader idea of how we dress ourselves in terms of statement or status um, by using our avatars in the worlds of metaverse. Yeah. So, so fashion, we always like to, you know, this, this intersection of the kind of the human element in any type of emerging tech is always really interesting. So we pull back like to pull back the thread and understand, you know, hey, we wear certain things like on this on this call, like uh, I'm wearing a certain thing because it represents, you know, something I'm involved in, which is lacrosse. You know, I also wear something because it's super comfortable and, and you know, I, I live in this hoodie. Right. But it is a representation of me that I want to project, um, not necessarily on purpose, sometimes maybe on purpose, but 
this is actually a human element that is just being, like you said, being translated to the digital experience, right? Do you yeah, think when you're exactly. doing it not not on purpose, even though subconsciously you're doing it on purpose because you've created over the years this this outward expression of who you are? Yeah. Um, okay. This is good. Um, uh, good question to to discuss about fashion in general. What fashion? Uh, um, how we we dress and then why we do that? Uh, why we wear what we do wear? Uh, but there is an answer, a very good answer in the um, the Devil's Wears Prada. So I'm not repeated here. But uh, what I'm going to say is that um, that the people wear things based on their mood and um, in physical world. And um, this mood is not something that uh, that they care that they uh, control in a moment. I mean, you have a permanent mood. And this, and you have a scaling of this permanent mood that is going up over twenty or minus minus twenty. So, um, so mostly you you have a specific way of of uh, uh, present yourself out there. And when you said I would like to feel comfortable, it it means that you need to feel comfortable for yourself. And what icon you you feel it's much more comfortable to um, to present of yourself out there. But in digital world, it's completely different because you have a choice and uh, you have uh, an avatar. And right now, you, you can choose how to build your avatar and what you wear. It's not only about your mood, and, but it's more about your emotions that you want to express more to enhance your emotions out there. And you don't have only one avatar. You can have a lot of avatars of yourself. Um, when I say yourself, I mean... Um, how many people you want to express out there, how many roles you want to play. So it's completely different. It's like the user and the customer and the consumer. When you are a, a, a normal customer in the physical world, you go outside and say, I'm going for shopping. And actually you go to, to, to make an around of your square of uh, local stores or a mall to see your friends, lunch and everything else. And by the way, you uh, you will go around the um, the clothes and the garments and everything. But when you go in digital to shopping, you go direct on specific things. You don't go around. You don't hang around. With me the metaverse, you you pass this mentality on your hang around with your friends because in the metaverse you never be alone. You are among friends and you have experience to to pass. So fashion is always the way you do things. It and and. And when it happens about, uh, when it has to do about the garments, it's about the way that you express yourself in the digital world, which means that you pay more attention because you want to build your image. I like that. that um, fashion is so multi-layered. I hadn't really thought of it in so many ways. Well, there's also there's there's also like a, a sense of personal identity in in style, number one, but also this is more kind of sports analogy. But if I wear a certain team's icon, right, or or logo, I would identify yeah. and someone else sees me in a restaurant or a bar they're like, oh, you like those guys? Oh, yeah. What about it's like an instant shortcut of uh, of quick connection right so do you see something like that extending into the have you seen something like that extend in the virtual world yet yeah of course this is uh, this is how it works you want to make friends you want to build your personal brand inside so you want to be um uh, to present your avatar as much more cool than than you have um outside outside you already have your friends because you grew up there so um you have um, a completely different pace, uh, pace that you create your brand outside in physical world and much more, more normal comes to you, more comfortable and comes to you uh, subconscious. When you are in digital world, you have to try, you have the whole effort in front of you, you have the stress on how to do it. So you go inside and you say, okay, I have to build my avatar and then you study how others are doing. And then you start thinking, how, what I want to present with my avatar, what I want to attract with my avatar. You connect it with your work, with um, with your portfolio, with uh, your website, with your LinkedIn, with everything that you want to, uh, to show out there. This is why they, we did the mistake to create 
a big hype around the metaverse as a marketing tool, which is completely wrong. Doesn't have any any connection on that. Of course, we can do marketing in the metaverse, but it's not the metaverse, the tool that we do marketing. That's interesting. Tell me more about that in, in that in what you just said about the metaverse and marketing. Let's dig into that a little bit. Well, you know, the metaverse is a platform, is a world. It's, um, you know, somebody comes to you and they say, now you have the ability to build another planet, another world. And what you, you do, you replicate what you have in physical world. And, and somebody that is a great developer or designer came to me and say, you see, I built a complete the Empire State building inside of the metaverse. And I say, why you did that? <laughs> if I need a replica, a replica, I can take a photo or I do something else. You have the possibility yes. to build impossible things. You need to destroy the perfect to enable the impossible. And as, you, as long as you carry your mentality of industrial culture inside of the metaverse, you never build the metaverse. You have to build it in a completely different way. You don't have the physical limitations. So why you keep limit yourself there? Because it's comfortable, because it's comfort zone for you. But this is what we see right now. I believe that after uh, two or three years that we continue doing this is a transition period. And then the designers will take care of that and they say, okay, why we do that and we don't do more fiction things? So this is why the metaverse is about storytelling. So we have to tell a story. We have to create a fiction world so that people be curious, curious about that. Otherwise, why to go to a, to a second world I have already this one. So the whole thing about digital twins and, every, and everything like that is for me completely crap. And, and then if you join a new world, you have something to do there. Otherwise, you stay with your boring life that you have. So what you do there is about a gamification, but not just to play a game, but to put the gamification inside of a valuable life that you have there. So the most important in the metaverse is how we architect this thing and in order to not be so boring. I mean, I saw that a lot of metaverse places that are going there with your avatar and then you park your avatar because you're just streaming videos and things like that. So that doesn't what, make any what sense. What is it? What, what do you think it is? Because like I, I, and I see in the chat that Nolan completely agrees with us. And I mean, two years ago, I went to the, the JP Morgan Bank in Decentraland. And it was just a replica of a bank and it was boring. Today, I saw a metaverse by a tourist, a tourism region. I won't mention any names, but like I've been to this region and it's incredible. The nature in this place is mind bending. And their metaverse is a gray office building with pictures on the wall of this incredible landscape that they have and I'm like, why didn't you make the metaverse? Like, why didn't you use this incredible landscape to create your tourist office in this fucking landscape that you have, not in a grey <laughs> building that is just, it's not even a nice grey building. I, I, it's, what's, what's preventing, because it's been two years, like you say, it's been 20 years. What's preventing people doing this? What's preventing people doing what you said and creating these new impossible worlds? Is it the it's technology? To... Is it the mind? What, what is it? No, it's easy. It's the money. Because the people, they don't build things. Uh, no, there is a 3% of the people that are visionary and they said, okay, I want to create something that evolves ourselves, humans, or the way that we're working, or we want, want to, to create something better. And there is a 97% of people that they say, okay, how we will make money? By create something different make serve the same kind of business so this is how we manipulate we the marketeers how we manipulate the, the, the world we say okay we create a, a great wrap of the same product so sometimes it works sometimes it's so ridiculous that everyone can understand it like the metaverse that we build right now and and there are founders out there that they want to build something great and i know that because i'm a founder so i know what I'm saying here is that I know a lot of people that they want to do the difference, but the investors doesn't allow them because the investors of today, and there are a lot of, of them, especially those that are connected with uh, 
with uh, public service or uh, uh, European money or, or whatever, they are uh, VCs, I mean. Those are coming with, um, with uh, give me, show me the money in one or two years. And there is a trend right now because of NFTs or um, cryptocurrency, we can be rich in one month. And uh, this is the, <laughs> the people, how they think. So there is only a small percentage of people that are visionary, really visionary. And they say, okay, let's build the unknown. Let's build the impossible and let's do it that. And, um, but the lack of money and the lack of, uh, of, uh, of surviving, it's a, it's a really bit. Uh, it's a big bit. And, uh, and this is, I believe, that uh, there is a problem. So they say, okay, let's build something that the people, they pay for this. And then maybe we can have those money to make whatever we are dreaming of. Yeah, a co couple quick thoughts. And Israel, great to see you in the chat as well as Nolan. Obviously, we, we've sparked some lively discussion, which is great. A uh, couple quick interesting reminders, though, right? Whenever a new technology comes out, it, the innovation is usually outside in, right? It's and then it turns into inside out when people start applying it in the right ways, and the expectations on the return on investment become more long range instead of short sighted, like we've all talked about. But the first iterations of the internet, New York Times basically took a picture of their paper and put it online. No interactivity, no nothing. It was just a digital representation of of the paper, which is like. That's that's kind of boring and sucky, right? But it's like it has to go through some boring and sucky in those stodgier institutions in order for the really creative people to take use of the technology and apply it in really cool ways. Um, I'm not saying that is saying anything you're saying is wrong, but from a general public perspective, that's how people do it. What's the easiest, safest test that I can do without getting fired, right? They, they, they were limited, though. So they were very, very constrained by what they could do. The tech was limited, now, yeah. The, um, it's interesting what, what we've all been saying there. And if you go back to the visionaries, and since a lot of this was about virtual fashion, a lot of the fashion designers are entregimate visionaries. They have a very kind of abstract creative way to look at the world and that's if you look at some of the the wearables they have a lot more flamboyance they have a lot more creativity than the worlds in which they're in i mean perhaps that's a way to, you know you create the fashion first and then the worlds evolve to accommodate the the creativity of the fashion no to understand to understand what what um um to, 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 no, to, to make more understandable what I'm, I was saying before is to see the world in a different perspective. I will just give you an example. Um, I will I will tell you just uh, the first the first uh, in two or three things, two three stories. Let's say okay. The first story is a film Contact that came out in 1999 with uh, uh, Jodie Foster, uh, who was a tech uh, oriented scientist. And she wants to find extraterrestrial um, um, activity and the aliens. Uh, yeah, a great film. And uh, whoever it remembers, because I'm not going to say the whole story here, is that when she jumped in the end on, on, on the starship going to find uh, the aliens, she was saying that, oh, my God, they shouldn't send me. They should send poet, a poet, uh, a poet to, to, to describe what I saw here. So... If you combine those two things, I mean, technology with art, then you will have a future world because technology itself doesn't know what, uh, it knows how to, uh, how to do things, but it doesn't know why to do it. And the art, it moves us outside of the comfort zone that we know right now. So the fashion designers, they design the world of the future. They don't design the world, um, uh, the, the garments that you wear in your common day, let's say, in the casual life. This is a side effect of what they design. So this is the one thing. The second thing is that how we, we make something that is not working today with the mindset that we have today. So the first skill that you have to have in order to create the metaverse and the virtual fashion and everything there and to embrace it in the whole, um, uh, whole, whole uh, aspect, you need to change your mentality. So I will give you just an example of how netizens we are working right now. 
First of all, we don't hire anyone. We don't have employees in our company uh, because we don't like to be a company like in the industrial culture. So we change the industrial culture to the metaverse culture. And how it's working is working with the projects. And every project is a small entity. We tokenize every project and we say those shares of the tokens goes to the people that they work to make it happen. So nobody pays until we don't create something and we sell something. So if you connect the future world with what you get for surviving, then you will never build the world. So it's so simple. So you, we, everybody has a job and they have um, money to survive and they invest the free time and the knowledge that they have to build the future. And, uh, and when the future is built and is working, I mean, we're working for interoperability, for example, and then we, we create a, a software as a service. When we put it out there, we already evaluate the cost and the profits on that. So the profits goes to the creators because we are in the creators uh, um, um, era. We don't build companies in the pyramid style. So com it's completely different way of thinking and mindset in order to move in a different world that is the foundation of that is sustainability. You cannot have sustainability, environmental, financial, or social sustainability, thinking with the same way of the industrial culture. This is the end. It, it went back, it's end. So you cannot try to translate what I'm saying here, what we're doing here, with the definitions that are coming from the industrial world. I'm not saying that I'm saying the right thing. I'm saying that you, if you want to judge those things, you have to to thinking in another mentality, not the industrial one. Because we don't build any more factories, the factory is gone. The factory is on our backpack. And it's not, <laughs> and netizens are not like digital nomads that they, that they just change area to sell the same marketing and the same business. We define the business that we work. We work on that business that we want to build in the future. So it's not about um, how we do marketing in the future. We're not, we don't care. It's not about how we will have the jobs in the future. We will not, we don't have jobs. This is the point. This is why we evolve. The guy that we made shoes and the machine is arrived because that guy asked the machine to make more shoes. And when the machine is arrived, that guy says, oh, I'm gonna lose my job. But that was the point. You asked for the machine. Now you have to learn how to, <laughs> to, to, to handle this machine. So I don't understand the people that they say, oh, AI is coming, oh my God, it's crazy. And, and I say, but we asked for it. Well, here's, here's years ago, we we'll speak about that. I, lo I love Sorry. all of this. No, do not apologize. Yeah. That was, that was yeah. awesome. Uh, I yeah. wanna have t-shirts made where the factory is in your backpack, number one. Uh, yeah. uh, number two, you're spot on with all of this. So here's what I look at it. I look at it as, a series of pattern breaking has to happen, right? You know, like the, the industrial culture, think about school system, industrialized school system, 1880s, Prussian government, trying to make the same person over and over again, right? That That is reverberated through our culture for years and still does today. And it requires a breaking of patterns from previous generations, which is difficult for people to do yeah. and, and to overcome. But you're right that it's a mindset that that, that has to change and, and has to open your mind to new ways of doing things and new ways of happening. So that one quick comment, but one follow-up question. So another sports analogy, all right? You always want to throw the ball where the person is going, right? Sometimes you know where they're going. It's a predefined route. Sometimes you don't know where you're going and you just guess or you have this innate relationship with that other player. So if we had an evolving set of blueprints and keep it super simple, like bullet points, what what should we be thinking about characteristic wise to build these new worlds? Like what would be one or two qualities that would, that would ring true? Oh, that's great. <clears throat> I never thought it about in highlights, but this is a good challenge. Uh, the first one is that the co-creation. Okay. So what co-creation means with web two, what we had, I mean, I will start a little bit earlier with web one, the internet is arrived in the end of, of, of nineties. And for me, it was um, the eighth miracle of the world. It was so fantastic. It, it was the first to communicate with people around the world instantly and ask questions, taking answers, 
everybody was on the same table and they have permission to, 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 to speak without asking for permission. So that was with Web2 and what we did actually, we just share cute pets and cute babies. Completely wrong because the marketing indicates the, uh, this to us. They want to survive, they want to keep control. Uh, and in Web3, what is the most important right now? The co-creation. The co-creation, what that means actually. We have the brands here and we have the customers here. And it was always like that. And a bridge to communicate. And this is the marketing. This is everything, the intermediaries in between those breeds. So what we should do right now in highlights, first of all, co-creation means that you take your brand past that bridge and build your brand inside of your community, making the community part of your brands. Second, the mass is dead. The weird is here. I mean, we don't speak to the mass. Somebody asked me um, when the metaverse will be popularized. And I said, I don't care about popularize anything. I care to have a community as huge as I want because I care only for those people I sell to those people, I hang out with those people. And if another person for another community wants to join simultaneously with the other community, everything is fine. And maybe we connect communities too, okay? The Beatles didn't invent the teenagers. They just show up and they lead them somewhere. And they create a huge um, uh, community that we said, it, okay, it became a massive. But first of all, of all we have to think about the community. So co-creation, stop broadcasting, stop sharing your life and live the experience is the, is the third one. You have to create experience. Today, we're not building great walls and we invite people to see our wall on Instagram or Facebook. As the old times, we invited people in our living room and dining together to share the albums of the photos. No, we don't do any more of this. So this is why I said the mentality is changed. What we do now is that we're moving ourselves through avatars, of course, into spaces that created to give us a role, a character, a secret agent, or I don't know. Uh, and we don't interact anymore. It's not about the interaction. It's about the immersiveness, the whole package. Mm -hmm. We feel, we live, we experience things together, and we come out of that and they say, oh, my God. I had this in my portfolio. I live that, or I want to live again, or maybe I will create it. I, I uh, expand it. Let's think about that. That's really that's really interesting. So, um, community. Let's focus on that, right? And and you said the value is more in the entire immersive experience rather than in necessarily a one to one interaction. Did I get that right? Okay, yeah, exactly. so think about it from a film analogy, right? The way a film becomes so awesome is not if Mark and I are in a scene and there's a dialogue in a bar, Mark and I are talking, the dialogue's important, but it's got to feel like it's at a bar. So you got to hear glasses clanking, you got to hear chatter, you got to hear music, you got to hear stuff going on in the background. You have extras, people that are involved in the scene to make it believable. So all these pieces and parts, you fill a particular role in this immersive experience that could change and evolve over time. That's really interesting. Like how immersive is it versus how one-to-one -one productive it is, right? Exactly. It's not, um, this is why we don't have the metaverse, yes, as it should be. I like the tr what we do in, in trying. I mean, this is the most important thing is to come with errors, is to come with fails, is to come with the prototypes. This is, we should uh, keep, putting money uh, and not give up on, on great ideas in order to, to, to project. But we have to have the goal. And the goal is not the marketing, as I said. The goal is to create this experience. And for me, um, in my mind, I have right now, under my opinion, I mean, uh, when we speak about metaverse, we don't speak nothing else than the full immersive VR, spatial audio and everything that you have there. and. Uh, it's like a movie. Right now we see, for example, in 3D, the avatar. But I know that many people, they like to be in, in the avatar to feel the same senses. And uh, I know that this is, can be real right now. It's so expensive. It's so complex today. But if we make that goal, we can succeed to make it accessible to everyone. Yeah, I think that's kind of like somebody 
going back to you said visionaries where somebody needs to say i want this and then the team producing it say that's not possible and then they it'd be like this the old steve jobs mentality where you, no make it happen um i got a few questions around that i mean obviously you mentioned interoperability you mentioned vr i just want to nip back to community and i want to be a little bit um annoying and so i work in kind of luxury I, some of my job is writing for very high-end luxury companies virtual fashion and one of the things about this high-end luxury is that the people don't want to be in a community like the the what is attractive is the individual exclusivity of these products and so how would how does that very high end use these immersive experiences to 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 achieve their goals if you like if that makes sense okay this is a good question first of all in the, uh, the world that we live and the world that we build is in, is for individuals so this is why we had the rise of influencers it came because every individual person can build um the, uh, can be a media that was the web too uh you don't need it any permission anymore you don't need to belong somewhere or to belong a company so you can be a media and uh everybody became media and we follow people by doing by showing them doing things sometimes stupid things but this is <laughs> how life is and uh uh and because everyone uh has the ability to do it we have uh, always a small percentage of people that they do the effort to to create quality um so the network is about it, it makes the individual to have the value and that network i call it community so um the network what is it? when we speak about the net it's like every net has a node and this node is an individual that shares value so the bigger the value that it shares the the best uh nodes connect uh, uh, surrounded, uh, by, surrounded by the, the, the best nodes. So the brands has a problem here because brands are not individuals. So uh, they want to communicate with individuals, but because the individual has the power right now, they couldn't understand the power of industrial mentality of the brands. So this is why the brands connect with influencers to represent it themselves inside of the network of individuals. And that was a big mess. In Web3, in the metaverse, everybody is a brand. Everybody is, belongs in a community at the time that enters to a world. It's not about uh, the community as we, as we thought it in the past um, of the people that they decide together or they should be together. No, it's, uh, it's about uh, a community that has value to give me and then I will go to another community to share that value there or take something else. Um, a good example is, um, is when we see Star Wars, for example, or, and uh, the series of Mandalorian. The Mandalorian is alone, but actually it goes and makes allies on his journey on somewhere. So we see individuals to connect together and we thought as in, in ourselves as a community of the Star Wars, of the Mandalorian. So this is when we say communities. Every community has a tribe, the people that they care about or what they do. And these tribes inside of the communities create the big mass around. So this is the, uh, the true influencers, actually, not what we see um, the people that they um, belong to brands. But the true influencer is someone that has an expertise and create um, uh, a huge community around around him, not because it sells something, but because it has something to say and interact with with the people and to take also to give it somewhere else. So it's a journey. Absolutely, yeah. Quick, quick shout out to Jamie in the thread. Uh, brand therapist, I love that. There is uh, there's definitely some therapy that uh, occurs in working on brand and working with brands. Um, one interesting great thing. Job, great job title. Right. Absolutely. Um, so Mark, one, one, uh, and, and Constantino, one, one quick follow on, on this community thread. Um, 
I find in, and I've been involved in communities. I'm involved in a few DAOs and, you know, uh, some are smaller, some are bigger. There's the whole math of community with Dunbar's number of a hundred and, you know, meaningful connections, right. From a one-to-one, -one, but the immersiveness is really important. Uh, the, like the immersive score of a community experience is really interesting. But what I found is, you know, people are really good when they jump into a community first and foremost. They're like, that sounds awesome. I'm in. We get on like three or four calls. Everyone's vibing. It's going. It's going. But the sustainability of excitement over time becomes challenged in a lot because you have one or two people that stay excited and then 50 or so people that are just kind of like around because they're waiting for something cool to happen. What have you found? That, that yeah. I think that's, I think that But if you, you could say that about almost everything. I mean, people, people join the gym in, in January and they, they're really excited for a few weeks and then they stop it down. People want to, to stop a habit and create a new habit. You have the same phenomenon where there's this initial enthusiasm and this initial spark. And then for most people, it just decreases to almost zero. And, but your observation, and I think in Web3, you could see that especially pertinently on Discord where everyone joins and it's like you said, and then very quickly it, it dis dissipates to nothing. Um, I think it's a great observation and I'm interested to hear what Constantina has to say. Just, just, to, just to, to give you two examples. First of all, just to, to say that um, community is not defined by the medium. So uh, even if you don't have a Discord, doesn't mean that you don't have a community. The thing is that how you communicate with them is completely different. This is the medium. Uh, it's not if you have a Discord and you have a community. It's the way around. And um, because you spoke about the, the, um, you writing in the in the big brands, I know that. Uh, I will give you an example about Louis Vuitton, for example. Louis Vuitton uh, understand, uh, understood very, very early um, the transition of people, that the people want something more. The new rich is not 60 years old, but is, um, are younger. And they change also culture because they be not are in the Western civilization, but they live in Asian civilization. And even more, if they, if because of Web 2, then we can change countries, we can change cultures. And so the consumers start thinking about, and they say, why to buy this um, Louis Vuitton thing with a, with a great wrap? So Louis Vuitton were bold once more. And they said, okay, let's, um, let's completely change the way that, uh, that, that we do things. It's perfect, it's, it's selling out there, but let's change it. And then, um, and then they hired uh, Virgil Abloh, who was not, a fashion uh, designer. Uh, they made him creative director. As Nike, for example, in the past, they didn't have any marketeer and market director who studied marketing, but they had a film director. So both of brands, they started to realize that uh, they need something more than just, you know, to build the brand and to make the marketing in industrial way. This is the way. They so they needed to change um, everything and they put it more down to their community to, to bring, uh, um, let's say, an electroshock in, in, in their community to say, okay, we do things for you. Just start, come back. And they start to interact. And this is why Louis Vuitton jump on, on Leagues of Legend, for example. And, uh, and they did things that we never saw, we never thought that it will be happen. If someone that is not Louis Vuitton did all of those things, all the mainstream media, they will wrote all the bad things about them, but not for Louis Vuitton. And this is why they succeed in the end. Yeah, that's a very, very powerful observation, yes. They, they almost have the, they can do what they want because they are Louis Vuitton. So it, in this case, if it was good, great. But if it was bad, they would still have the same media. Uh, at, at least they, they have, yes, because they pay the media. So, um, uh, I, I mean, uh, and, and what happened, and another indicator is that what happened right now in the metaverse, who builds the metaverse, don't read the mainstream media. Because I know brands that they succeed in metaverse that they never appear in those media. So they do the job and they laugh with all others that they want to take the, uh, you know, to, 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 be, to be on and they say, okay, I am the best, I am the best. No. Yeah, ab absolutely. So, um Kind of, kind of going on that same thread. The idea, it you know, from a from a 
outsource. So I had this conversation with it. He, I think he was a marketing professor at the Kellogg school. Um, and he had mentioned an early idea of like outsourced brand identity and a thread that we kind of come back. And this was way before web three. This was like 10 years ago. And I had this conversation with this guy and it goes back to a thread that appears, Mark, we've, we've talked about it a bunch is the idea of hierarchical versus emergent, right? And a lot of things that we do, the industrialized world is very hierarchical and in, and it creates these pathways for these people to participate in that system where emergent is more, hey, we're stirring the pot and it kind of flows. Leadership could flow as well. But, you know, you have brands that are very, uh, that their brand identity is very precious to them in a hierarchy but the value of the brand doesn't come out until it hits the emergent side. So how are people going to look at those two systems and consider opening up brand identity, just like you're talking about? Um, okay. Look at Gucci, for example, Gucci, they don't care about what they do out there. Uh, they jump in, in virtual um, fashion and virtual worlds very fast. And what they do, you can buy uh, with 60 euros, we can buy the whole um, Gucci collection in Zapeto. So doesn't care about the ex exclusivity so much or what is the brand outside of, of virtual world. So I think that they build two kinds of, of, of stages. The physical world has its own rule and that is not changed. The hierarchy is there, everything is there, it's, it works. So in virtual world, it doesn't work like that. So if the brand wants to, in, to enter in the virtual world and um, try to, com to communicate with people that they are already there, the netizens, the people that they have in the foundation, the internet, and not in the industrial era, then they should stop thinking about, I am the brand, because nobody cares about that. They care about the value that they bring. Okay, they get the attention by going inside of the virtual worlds because they are the brand. But nobody judges them of what they did in the physical world inside of, of, uh, of a virtual world. I, I know brands in virtual world that nobody knows them, that they sell 100 times more uh, of, um, of brands like uh, Louis Vuitton or uh, Gucci or Nike or whatever, because the people uh, didn't care about that before because they have their own code on how they work inside. So we have to study. If you are a brand, you have to study this code. This is why you have to take your brand from this one side of the, of the river and to move it in, in the other side of the river inside of, of the world that you want to, 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 uh, to jump in. If you see it only as um, uh, another act in order to gain a marketplace or to gain um, money that is will not work because the the whole community of the virtual world we throw up uh, we throw out you and then uh, you have to 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 communicate connect with people that they breathe the mentality of virtual world they understand how the whole thing is working is is completely different. Do you think that's a so that last question you made, you have to attract or speak to people who are really into the immersive worlds, virtual worlds. Are you are, is that, are you talking generationally there? Do you think on, on if you pan out where our generation are not so adamant that it is the future, whereas the, the new generations, alphas, are? Yeah, you're right. Um, my, uh, what I built in NetSense, what we built, we don't, I said all the time, we don't build things for the current generation or the generation Z. We build things for generation alpha. Those people are built the future because they started building from the mentality pay, plays the biggest role. We can understand, but in mass, as generation, we don't understand it uh, 100%. Um, my daughter, for example, here is digital camera. She said, why you call it digital? Is there another one that is not digital? So how, we how old is she? Nine. It's a great question. So, yeah. yeah and, a uh, question. <laughs> I have a, a lot of questions like that from my, from my kids and I learn from them. I always come to, to my kids and I say, okay, let's play, play a PlayStation. And uh, it, I, 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 I see how long it takes me to um, 
start learning things uh, in 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 uh, um, on the contrary on how they they do it for them is something that is really simple and uh, they born with that and they understand that because they hear it all the time it's their um, playground so I love to be the, on the, that playground we are I like to... you're you're saying we're a technological species it's it's you're born with it. Exactly, because I believe that technology is the projection of is a biological projection of ourselves, and the reason that we that they push um, humans in the new uh, evolution species. Because don't forget that we will never stay. We didn't came to stay all the time in the same uh, level of Homo sapiens. We need to move further. We forget that. We believe that um, when people they say, "Okay, let's have this for the rest of our lives." There wasn't any normal. If the people that they that they knew history, they understand that hundred years ago we built the automobiles and we call it horseless vehicle because we separate the horses from the carriage. And they took them twenty years to understand that. Oh, now we need to give them a new name and a new shape because this shape of carriage it doesn't work anymore. It worked for for horses. So look at that, that we are in the same way right now. We have horseless vehicles. And well, and we also, learn from history. And also our means for evaluating how quickly or how strong the motors powering those horseless vehicles, we still call it horsepower. Exactly. It's communicating so, backwards, yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and that, uh, exactly. So we have to, to, to change the mentality. We have to understand that we need to evolve. Everybody says, ah, oh, okay, we pass with uh, industrial revolution number four. Who wants any more an iPhone 15 or an iPhone 16? We need something new. So I cannot imagine uh, the next generations of 2,500 to have the iPhone 3,005, 6. So, it's, <laughs> it's so yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. But uh, th that, that wasn't the point. The point is to change. So uh, when up, if Steve Jobs was here, it will be say, okay, I need someone to tear me down because he did that pointing the finger on IBM, and he created what we do right now, thanks to him. And, um, and speaking about brands, people follow people. So this is why Apple came what it, it became, because the emotion uh, tense that Steve Jobs put on that brand, it creates what, it, 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 um, what Apple is today. But let's move to another level. And everybody wants that all the time. And this is what I want for netizens, for example. In the netizens, I would like to put a stone of the evolution, a small stone, as everyone else. And then somebody else came to put on that stone. So every one of us, we are stepping stones of the future. So we have to respect that and to have the responsibility of our um, actions. It's not about the money. The money is a side effect of what we create. Let's create first something, and then we speak about the money. Amazing. Amazing. Yep. Man, Constantino, we could, we could, we could chat for, for a while on a lot of different threads. I'm inspired by your perspective and no, totally yes, aligned, totally aligned with the, so my, my quick closing thought, you know, we're, we're, we're a little bit over on time, but I wanted to uh, wrap it up here with a couple of thoughts and we'll kind of go around the horn. Number one is like humans going back to like the human condition aspect of all of this stuff is we're always in a constant state of becoming, right? No matter what's happening. If you look at, I referenced this before, every year, 98% of the cells in our body change, right? We're actually different people every year, which is crazy to think about. But we're always looking for the next step. We're always looking to become something bigger than ourselves with a larger community, build something bigger than ourselves. So thankfully, we have that ingrained in us, so to speak, and, and we have a new way to see what's coming next, next in the tech. So that's great. Mark, closing thoughts on your side? Um, yeah, thanks. It's, it's been, a, 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 the last 10 minutes have been brilliant. I love that kind of deep evolution of the human species. And I think the lots of observations, the one about the human nature to hold on to the past in some way, if that's li linguistic, if the language that we use, like you mentioned horsepower, we still measure the speed of cars in horsepower. There's this kind of link between the past and the present. And I wonder if, a, that gap is becoming shorter, so the generations now won't hold on to these this terminology for so long. But I wonder if when your, your daughter is nine, when she's 39, will she be using terminology of today 
to describe the technology of 30 years into the future. And her kids will be going, why are you calling it this when it's that? And I wonder, like that juxtaposition between uh, wanting to hold on to the past, but also a technological species destined for the future. I love that kind of, that, I don't know if it make any sense, but that's what I was thinking about. To me, to me, you are. I mean, it's analogy. It, we we serve our stories through analogies. Analogies are how we relate new things to old things and make people more comfortable with new things. So I think there's always got to be a little throwback, but you know, we could definitely use a little more pattern breaking in 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 our worlds. Uh, Costantino, any last closing thoughts from you? Um, uh, thank you guys that give me the states, and uh, it was a really nice conversation. I believe that we should look more. Um, more broader everything to look everything in an helicopter view and not have short term goals but we, be, we should build something we have the opportunity to build something amazing, we live in a great era right now, I feel myself very lucky that I am in this era that everything is changed and uh, we can build something that today we call it creator's era or metaverse era, let's build it and let's find the courage to disconnect with the past and the industrial mentality Amazing. Awesome. Wonderful. Hey guys, thanks for joining, Thank especially the folks in the chat, Jamie, Israel, uh, you know, uh, all you guys out there, um, giving us uh, Nolan, actually Nolan. you were on there too. Of course, jumping in first, I'll have to say Virginia over Duke Nolan, but we can talk about that lacrosse wise elsewhere. Check out our website guys. Uh, so beautifully built and rendered by Mr. Mark Fielding thinking on paper.xyz or as they say it over the pond xyz and yes. uh, stay tuned every thursday constantino what a pleasure thanks for joining us and providing all the great thank you uh conversation take care everybody we'll see you next week same time same place